Hey guys, how's it going? Crane here. Today I want to give you guys my full review of the Frozen Throne expansion. This is week two, and we just got the Lich King encounter, and basically we know what all the PvE content is like, we get a pretty good idea what's going on in Arena, and we have a fairly straightforward idea about what's going on in Constructed. So, to get started, I think this expansion overall has had the most um, the most detailing. It had the most effort put in by the development team. And I understand that for some of you it's like the worst arena experience and maybe the worst ranked experience and all that. But really, you look back on the cards and the cards are great. There's a very few trash tier cards, almost none, and there's like basically no textless cards. That is a first. That means all the cards can be relevant in some way. Out of all the expansions we've seen, more cards than ever before as a proportion to the whole set can be used in the different game modes. But there are a few issues with that, and the main issue in Constructed is, of course, that largely gets overshadowed by the power of the Druid class. We have Druid on an extreme power level. It took me just a few days to realize just how crazy it was. And now people are getting a bit sick of playing Druid and all that. And it's understandable. But I have talked to some people that just play ranked all day and just get top legend every, every month. And they agree. I think if Druid didn't exist, it'd be one of the best metas ever. It's like Druid is on like god tier power level and most of the other decks are kind of right underneath it. I think if Druid just didn't exist miraculously, there'd be a lot of viable decks and a pretty interesting meta that I think would last several weeks at the very least and by Hearthstone standards, that's top tier. In terms of Arena, we had bit of drama with the synergy picks and all that. I don't think that's really an issue. I think something that will get sorted out in time. I think in Arena, as you've seen from some of my previous videos, the hero cards really ruin it. We've never seen single cards just absolutely grant landslide victories like these in the past, and just doesn't feel too fair. It doesn't feel very fun, because you have to keep in mind, if, if these cards exist, these are the decks that are going to make it to high wins. Naturally, they're going to get funneled up. So, you know, yes, you know, maybe maybe 1 in 20 decks gets a, a hero card. And maybe you just got a hero card and you just went 12 wins for the first time. And you want that, that to be meaningful. I get it. But, like, you know, ultimately we're going to have an arena where every player after 8 wins is going to have an overpowered hero card that you have to either also have or outrace. So it does not feel good. It's not healthy for Arena for the long term, even though you might have a spectacular run or two. Again, I think this is also a pretty easy fix. Lastly, we have the adventure content. This is the first card like pack expansion that also had something extra. It also had, I would say, technically it's like half of an adventure, but it, it was much more than that. In my opinion, if you have a garbage adventure uh, or just a bad boss, a meaningless boss that you just kill with any deck in the game and you circumvent all the mechanics, that's basically no content. The way I see adventure content is if you play a boss, if it's polished, if it's reasonably difficult to the point where you have to adjust or use or at the maybe even create a whole new deck in order to beat it, and it's polished in the way that, you know, it doesn't do completely stupid stuff and kill itself, which has certainly happened in the past, that's a real encounter. And despite the fact that this adventure had about half the bosses of a normal adventure, I would say in terms of meaningful bosses, it outmatched all the other like, pure adventure expansions in the past. So we had what I would consider the best adventure content in addition to some of, if you discount a few things like Druid and Hero Cards and Arena, some of the best actual pack card content ever. So actually this expansion is extremely well thought out, extremely well designed, but I think there are a few things that failed in the QA. And that has to do with the issues I mentioned before. I really like playing a lot of these 
like spin off decks. I like the fact, even though Druid overpowered, I like that I can play so many different versions of Druid. Of course, I've avoided Jade, but still, I like the fact that a lot of the other classes, despite the fact that, yeah, you lose to a lot of Druids and you lose to a lot of like Pirate Warriors and things of that like, but the reason Pirate Warriors exist is because, you know, decks like that are the only ones that can outpace and have a chance against the Druid meta. But if you play other stuff, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of really cool decks. The arena experience is an interesting one. We've gone two weeks through and it's still difficult to understand what the powerful classes are. It seems there's a lot of variance and there's a lot left to explore in terms of, you know, what is really effective in terms of a class and strategy with the consideration of the new cards and the synergy picks. So the exploration should also last for a long time. So many good things, but we're blocked off here. What we really need is we need Blizzard to step in and do something about the Druid population on ladder. I don't think many of us would really care if they just completely annihilated Druid. You know, there's many ways to accomplish that. It's been suggested to put Innervate in, in the Hall of Fame and, you know, don't really need to do that. Yes, that's, a, that's one solution possibly. Or you can make Innervate cost like three mana and grant five mana. Or you can make it cost five mana and grant seven mana or something like that. Or, you know, you can make very different changes to how the Druid interacts. You can make changes to Jades. You can make changes to the new 10 cost super broken card. There's a lot of things that you could do, but I think the change needs to be significant enough that there are basically no druids on ladder because the other eight classes actually all deserve to be highlighted in this great expansion. More importantly than what they need to do, the timing. They need to do it like right now. The hype is super important. You guys watch my videos like every day and stuff, and you know, you guys understand the flow of the game, you're patient, even though sometimes it's not the right way to do things about how Blizzard changes things and the rest. But the typical player that plays Hearthstone, especially the new player that plays Hearthstone, they log in the game and they see what their experience is like immediately. And if it's bad, they're not going to play anymore. So a new player is going to pick up the game or a returning player is going to pick up the game. They're going to be in the low ranks. They're going to play net deck J Druid. Trust me, those decks are there at rank 24. All right. And they're going to see just how busted it is, just how not fun it is, especially after they play like seven of these decks in a row, and they're just not going to play anymore. And it's the same for Arena. Arena can be so good with just a few small tweaks to hero cards and a few of the win more cards. This expansion with Bone Mares and with like the Cobalt Scale Banes, so many win more cards. Arena is very much curve stone again. A lot of the fixes for Arena have been reduce the occurrence of any specific card. And yeah, that doesn't work so well when the card is completely insane and can't be played around like Vicious Fledgling. It does not work for that. But for cards that create an overwhelming deck type that has a win more feature, like if a deck on average, instead of having two Bone Mares and two Cobalt Scale Banes, has one Bone Mare and one Cobalt Scale Banes, or maybe even less than that, that is an appropriate fix to the dynamics of the arena mode. And basically, arena cards are really easy to figure out. A lot of you guys give, give us crap, us streamers, us YouTubers, for doing a really bad job of analyzing cards before they come out. And that's understandable. Um, the value of cards is entirely based on the meta that's generated in constructed play. But for arena play, the standalone power of the card is like 95% of its value. I would argue I've almost never been wrong on the value of an arena card when judging cards that are coming out. Even like Vicious Fledgling, I noticed how stupidly powerful that card was in like two seconds. I did that video without actually looking at those cards beforehand, by the way. Two seconds! I can tell how stupidly broken a card can be in arena, right? Basically what they need is, they need to have some kind of process where they look at, they don't need to change the cards for arena mode to script constructed, they just need to adjust their occurrences and they need to remove some of them to have Arena maintained to be a good game. Because basically right now we have like public test realm Arena. We just like dump all the cards in and see what people hate playing against. That's not okay. Because as I mentioned, players that are not like you and I, players that check out Hertzen for the first time, log into Arena, it used to be their favorite game mode the last time they played, or maybe they just like drafting things in card games, they queue up, 
And they get slaughtered by win more cards. They get slaughtered by Lich King Jaina two out of three of their losses. They're not going to play again. We have to nail down the enjoyment experience when the hype is high. And for Arena, that's really easy to do. There just needs to be a step to assess what cards are busted and not allow them to break Arena. And for Constructed, they need to have a different system. They've obviously spent a lot more time on the expansion. This expansion is clearly the best design want out of all of them. No question about it in my mind. But you have this Druid problem. You can't expect and understand how the meta is going to happen 100%. You know, maybe if they had more time in QA, maybe they could have figured out a Druid completely busted. They probably would have. But that aside, mistakes happen. It's not about preventing the mistakes completely when it comes to Constructed because there's so many dynamics to that game mode. But you need to be able to have a system and you need to be able to willing to act in order to fix these. Not a month later. You know, someone who's playing Hearthstone for the first time because an expansion just came out is not going to be patient enough to wait six weeks for the bad state of the game to change. Right? And that's ultimately who we need for Hearthstone to continue on as the great game that it is. Let me know your thoughts Overall, I am very positive on the expansion, but it seems like if Blizzard takes too long to act on the really small issues that are causing big problems on the game, the longer they wait, the worse this expansion is going to seem. And that is a real shame because the design behind it is easily the best. Give me your thoughts and I'll see you guys tomorrow.